Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. I'm going to date today's program because it so much has to do with the United States of America. And uh, this is July 5th, yesterday being the great celebration of July 4th uh, for our Independence Day. And the reason I want to specify that is that I want to talk about three things worth fighting for in the United States. Uh, and number one is just a common decency, a, a return to an awareness that Americans do have a basic natural law Judeo-Christian heart. Now, some might argue that we're losing that rather rapidly, but it's worth fighting for. Now, I mention this because, for example, recently, two elements of, of woke culture, one having to do with a light beer, the other having to do with a, a, a famous movie series, uh, one airing towards uh, trying to put a transgender label to this light beer, and the other taking a male legacy kind of movie star image and uh, through Disney feminist woke culture, reducing that star to someone uh, essentially impotent and, and a younger uh, goddaughter becoming the heroine. Uh, and it flopped. And they both flopped. And why did they flop? Why were they both rejected? Because the United States is still basically a natural law country, still basically a decent country and a country that reflects Judeo-Christian values. And I just mentioned because it's worth fighting for. Sometimes, you know, you get these young uh, athletes, 20-something, uh, dare I be committing sins of ageism, but the reality is when you're 20-something, it's not the same as being 50-something in terms of wisdom. And so they kind of hit, hit the top and make a bunch of bucks, and all of a sudden, all they can do is trash talk the United States. Uh, and based on uh, things that they deserve, based on their victimhood. You know, it's interesting, uh, both Lenin and Stalin agreed, the way you move the masses is convince them that they're victims. And then give them a cause that will save them from their victimhood. So that's not the way this country was built. It was built on virtue and hard work and immigrants coming from all over the world uh, to be true to a constitution that does reflect God and the natural law. So, number one, the United States, its decency is worth fighting for. So, don't get discouraged uh, as we see more left-leaning agendas from the coasts and, and Hollywood and news. Yeah, that's a reality, and it's probably going to get worse. Fight for the decency of America as an American citizen. I, I speak... Uh, I spoke to a uh, European bishop uh, recently, and he says, look, Western Europe depends on America uh, to keep some standard of decency as Western Europe is entering a type of spiritual desert. Uh, also, as I'll mention a little bit later in the program, uh, the Vatican ambassador of the Philippines, Howard D., the former Vatican ambassador, I should say, uh, was calling uh, America to stand true to a Marian message uh, because his country needs it. So, America's worth fighting for. Uh, so let's keep the battle up for pro-life, pro-God, pro-family, pro-natural law positions. Secondly, children are, of course, worth fighting for. And yesterday on the 4th of July, I went to see the remarkable film, uh, The Sound of Freedom. Now, I, I do want to uh, mention in transparency that uh, Jim Caviezel uh, is, a, is a dear, a personal friend of mine. And as we were watching, as I was watching the movie, I was actually texting back and forth with him. Uh, there was a teenager next to me. I almost leaned over and said, here, this is a text from Jim. And he's the same guy, up there, but it'll be too distracting. Anyway, uh, but this, as Jim will say at the end of his film, is not about Jim Caviezel. This is about a massive, the, the most rapidly growing industry in the world uh, and as the movie depicts, you know, you can sell drugs uh, once, uh, but you can sell a child several times a day. And uh, the, it, it's, it's a troubling movie. Uh, it'll make you feel uncomfortable. But guess what? So does the Christian message. In fact, the Christian message demands 
in many cases that we are uncomfortable. So please go see this movie because it will take the idea of sexual slaves, of children, human trafficking, it, it will take it off the, the, the check mark category where you say, yeah, of course that's wrong, to an existential awareness when you see innocent faces that depict the, the, the satanic rage that is a human trafficking. Go see it. Uh, maybe support someone else to go see it. But this is something we need an existential uh, angst about, something that really moves our heart, not just, yeah, we know that's not good. And uh, uh, Jim does a masterful job in conveying it, and he gives a special message at the end. Uh, and one reason Jim, I think, is so extraordinary in this is he believes it with all of his heart. Uh, and uh, this is a historic moment to try to correct the historic evil of human trafficking. So go see Sound of Freedom. Second thing worth fighting for are children. And sadly, the United States is one of the largest, if not the largest market for these children being trafficked into our country for sexual abuse. Uh, and that's something we have to take seriously as well. Uh, we've got to pray in reparation for our country being one of the major, if not, not the major market for this really satanic, it's a satanic evil. You, you, you know, abusing little children is millstone stuff, uh, which Jim mentions in the movie as part of the script. Uh, but uh, we have to have that awareness uh, as well. So go see Sound of Freedom. Number three, what's worth fighting for? Uh, and this I want to be a little bit more nuanced with, uh, but Our Lady of America is a series of reported apparitions uh, to the United States from Our Lady, calling the United States to take a special role of leadership in purity. Now, let me mention in total obedience, there was a commission regarding uh, Our Lady of America, these reported apparitions. Uh, it came out uh, just a few years back <clears throat> uh, from uh, Bishop Rhodes from the Diocese of South Bend who headed the bishop's committee because essentially the bishops who had a reported apparition from Sister Mildred, originally Sister Mary Ephraim, uh, came together and they appointed Bishop Rhodes as head of this committee. And so he gave the final statement. Uh, so, And the final statement after there was... Uh, some uh, input by the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith uh, under a prefect that was somewhat known for being uh, rather anti-apparitional, uh, I can say in, in quite in frankness. Uh, he gave, a, there was a response that was given for this, and the response was essentially this, that there's no error in the message except one regarding St. Joseph, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Secondly, the reported visionary uh, had extraordinary virtue uh, and there was no sign of deception or hallucination or any mental or psychological imbalance. Number three, there are uh, some evidence of miracles happening at this. Number four, uh, there were fruits both locally and nationally. And so you would expect number five to say, so we believe that this is a supernatural uh, character apparition, what's called, you know, a constante supernaturalitate, but the conclusion is quite the opposite. The conclusion is that we do not find anything supernatural in this and that it was really just a subjective experience. Now, I'm going to say for a second time, obedience is the proper response to any bishop's statement. But obedience as the church dictates obedience, and that is this reported message uh, of Our Lady of America should not be promulgated right now. It should not be spread as if it's an approved message. It's not. Uh, that would be false. But remember, there's no forbidden books uh, in the Catholic Church. They, they did away with the index uh, back in the 60s. And so while we can read this, we can't refer to it as a, a church-approved message. Now, let me say quite honestly, uh, I believe this message is authentic. Uh, I believe it's powerfully supernatural. Uh, but I completely abide and will uh, not term it as such in any 
uh, public uh, format. That's a personal belief that I have that every individual Catholic can have, but that's different than a public uh, statement that it's authentic. That can be done uh, only officially by the church itself. So why do I bring it up? Because I think these reported messages are worth fighting for. And I want to go through some of them briefly. Uh, if you want a longer treatment of this, uh, go to Mariology Without Apology. It's on the MotherOfAllPeoples.com site. I do about an hour of this with Monsignor Arthur uh, Calkins, also an expert uh, on these uh, reported apparitions. And we certainly will go through a, a fuller treatment of the message and the theological assessment. And quite frankly, <clears throat> the uh, inconsistencies that came out with the commission. So uh, what happens in a case like that? Well, you can always respectfully, and let me underline that respectfully, request further examination, further investigation. The history of, of Marian apparitions uh, is a history of uh, certain reported apparitions being reported, and then a first commission saying no, and then a later bishop coming forward, or the same bishop at a later time coming forward and saying, uh, I think this deserves more investigation, and then ultimately it being approved. Uh, that's just the reality of the human process of examining these. So what am I suggesting after you know reading some of these messages, reported messages, which at this point are not confirmed as authentic, uh, that if you feel so moved, uh, pray about a new investigation for Our Lady of America, possibly write respectfully, a letter to Bishop Rhodes, the Bishop of South Bend, asking for a new investigation. Uh, if you don't do it respectfully, you will it will be counterproductive to any authentic uh, moving forward of further investigation on this. So let's get to the reported message because I want you to make your own discernment about does this message lead to a burning in your heart? Does it, does it have the ring of Our Lady uh, in it? Uh, and again, we're going to do this in a, in, a, in a brief fashion. You want a, a longer treatment, go to Mariology Without Apology. Uh, Our Lady of America, myself and uh, Monsignor Arthur Calkins, uh, goes through an hour of this. So I'm just going to go through uh, three messages, reported messages, uh, from this volume. I mean, and you can, if you go to Mother of All Peoples, you'll have the reported messages online uh, in an article on just, just uh, search Our Lady of America. Uh, and let, let's start with the beginning of the apparitions. Uh, and again, every time I say apparitions, I'm talking about reported apparitions, and I'm not implying that it has public approval. In fact, I'm saying it doesn't have public approval. So just for total clarity and obedience here. So this is September 25th, 26, 1956. This is the eve of what at that time was the Feast of the North American Martyrs. Sister Mary Ephraim, later to be called Sister, uh, Sister Mildred, uh, was a member of a religious order. And uh, she's receiving these, and this is taken from her diary. Uh, so on that eve, September 25th, 26, she says, quote, then solemnly and distinctly, in clear yet majestic tones, I heard these words. This is after she's describing the image of Our Lady. Quote, I am Our Lady of America. I desire that my children honor me, especially by the purity of their lives. She comes back. Literally, Sister Mary Ephraim had to break off the communication because obedience called for it. And Our Lady complimented her for doing so. And so... It continues in the afternoon. Our Lady reportedly says, quote, My child, I entrust you with this message that you, may, that you must make known to my children in America. I wish it to be the country dedicated to my purity. The wonders I will work will be the wonders of the soul. They must have faith and believe firmly in my love for them. I desire that they be the children of my most pure heart. I desire, through my children of America, to further the cause of faith and purity among peoples and nations. Let them come to me with confidence and simplicity, and I, their mother, will teach them to become pure like to my heart, that their own hearts may be more pleasing to the heart of my son. And then further down, Sister, Ag uh, Sister Mildred explains, 
Our Lady, moreover, moreover uh, often emphasized her desire that the shrine in Washington, D.C. be made a place of special pilgrimage. She wishes to be honored there as Our Lady of America, the Immaculate Virgin. So, to summarize a lot in a little, uh, Our Lady would continue reportedly, so you get the reported idea, right? Our Lady uh, uh, would repeatedly come and in, in, in a couple key messages ask that a statue, see if I can give you this image of this statue, that statue would be solemnly processed into the shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. by the bishops. And one is reminiscent of, you know, David having a solemn procession of the Ark of the Covenant uh, into the temple. Uh, Our Lady wants it done with the approval of her uh, apostolic sons of the bishops. For this, to have this statue processed and put permanently into the Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in D.C., she promises more miracles of the heart than Lourdes and Fatima. It's almost beyond belief. More miracles of the heart. She will repeatedly say, not physical miracles, but miracles of the soul. Well, think about it logically. If Our Lady wants to make the United States a center of purity and it's all based on our, our particular appreciation of Our Lady as the Immaculate Conception, well, what better place than the National Shrine, the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C., that this would emanate from? And if you've been to the shrine, I don't know, there's got to be 70, 80 statues of Our Lady. One more uh, shouldn't break the bank. And certainly they wouldn't have to pay for it anyway. Uh, but this is what she's asking for, an acknowledgement by the bishops and the procession of her statue into the shrine of the Immaculate Conception. It seems rather minor uh, he of a heavenly request for such historic graces of purity. Uh, now, let me also go to... Uh, well, I'm going to finish that one message because... It gives a little bit of the strength. Again, uh, take a half an hour, 45 minutes at most, and, and read through these reported messages and see whether it moves your heart. Uh, there, there's also part of this where Our Lady talks about the role of America in, in world peace and that if the United States plays this role, it could be of, of great grace for us and for the world. If not, uh, we will suffer as the other nations uh, who seek peacelessness, who seek war, will suffer. This is, uh, as she concludes that first message, quote, Behold, O my children, the tears of your mother. Shall I weep in vain? Assuage the sorrow of my heart over the ingratitude of sinful men by the love and chasteness of your lives. Will you do this for me, beloved children? Or will you allow your mother to weep in vain? I come to you, O children of America, as a last resort. I plead with you to listen to my voice. Cleanse your souls in the precious blood of my Son. Live in his heart and take me in that I may teach you to live in great purity of heart, which is so pleasing to God. Be my army of chaste soldiers, ready to fight to the death to preserve the purity of your souls. I am the Immaculate One, patroness of your land. Be my faithful children as I have been your faithful mother. Again, there's, there's beautiful images where Our Lady appears and Sister Mildred describes uh, of her heart, uh, of, of the movement uh, that she's calling. But I want to go, because Tempest Fugit here, I want to go to a message uh, directed to the youth of America. And I mentioned earlier uh, Howard D., a saintly man, former Vatican ambassador to the Philippines, who would frequently call and say, Mark, what's holding things up in the United States on Our Lady of America? Because we need the grace of purity in our country, in the Philippines. Our youth are being uh, attacked violently with, with new efforts of pornography and other, other forms of, uh, of, of, of filth. And we need these graces. Uh, and so listen to this message because Our Lady is saying reportedly that it will be the youth of America that help a global movement to bring purity 
uh, to the youth of the world. Uh, this is uh, through uh, the explanation of Sister Mildred. She says, quote, Further accounts relating to the mission given me and to others closely connected with it. Our Lady made known to me that she is particularly interested in the youth of our nation. It is they who are to be the leaders of this movement of renewal on the face of the earth. Their ranks will be swelled by the youths of other nations, whom Our Lady also calls to help in the accomplishment of this great renewal. But the youth must be prepared, and this must be done by instilling into them not only the knowledge of the divine indwelling, but a serious study of it, living it in such a way that the divine presence becomes, as it were, an intimate and necessary part of their life and daily living. From this will flow a great love, a conflagration that will envelop the world in the flames of divine charity. This is what Our Lady is working for because this is the great desire of her divine Son and it is to the youth of America that she is holding out this challenge. Well, she's saying here that at the foundation of this movement of American youth, and look, if, if you're a young person or if uh, you're not a young person uh, and you want to forward to this someone that you know is on fire for the faith, a young person that could be uh, inspired to do something about this, Our Lady is saying that this has to be based on a new, both knowledge and experience of the divine indwelling. Now, years back, the divine indwelling was a foundation of, of moral and spiritual formation. We barely hear about it anymore. It's the, it's the truth, the Catholic doctrinal truth, that in the soul in grace, the Trinity dwells. And what Our Lady is saying very clearly in this message, and again, the beautiful visions and other messages that support this in, in this reported message, that they will ascribe to a new level of purity when they realize the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwells in them. Uh, it's like being a walking tabernacle, a new self-respect, a new respect for others. Uh, so how do we get this new teaching, uh, this new uh, knowledge? Well, there's a little book called Jesus in You, uh, which is simply a summary of Scripture, the Father's, um, some great saints like Teresa of Avila and uh, St. Catherine of Siena, uh, the popes on this, popes like Leo XIII and, and Pius XII saying, there's nothing different in nature than the indwelling trinity in your soul, if you're in grace, and the trinity in heaven. So very powerful, powerful statements. So it's a little bit called, you know, Jesus in you. You can look it up. Uh, it's a cheap book, but it's a summation of these truths that if you do know of a young person who feels on fire to do something for this, get him a copy of that book. And this is this new awareness, but it's not just the head, it's got to be in the heart. So once again, these reported messages are calling for a global movement of the youth. How, I mean, how necessary is that right now with the porn addictions and, and the uh, you know, the, what's going on with the, with the texting and the sex texting, whatever that's called. And I mean, these things are ubiquitous. And the mother seemingly is trying to return us to purity. But we're going to need a new, strong, committed force to do that. So, number one with uh, the reported messages, to pray that that statue be solemnly processed. This, this is going to presuppose the approval of the bishops into the National Shrine. Number two, a new movement, a youth movement for purity in our country and from our country throughout the world based on a new awareness of the divine indwelling of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then number three, I want to close with uh, beautiful teachings from this reported message on St. Joseph. Now, let me say this. Even if this were not a true message, which I personally believe is a true message, you've got to make your own discernment and always stay within obedience to the church in terms of what you say publicly, uh, in terms of its status. These messages, uh, these, these truths about St. Joseph are of the most beautiful in the history of mystical tradition. And they confirm the best of Josephite theology that's been going on uh, for the last millennium. So uh, let me read you just... Uh, one message 
uh, that speaks about the dignity and efficacy of St. Joseph. Uh, this is also uh, a first Wednesday, since I've already dated this on July 5th, and every first Wednesday should be dedicated in a special way to St. Joseph. So, from the uh, manuscript, in early October 1956, a week after Our Lady's first appearance, St. Joseph, though I did not see him at this time, spoke to me the following words, quote, It is true, my daughter, that immediately after my conception, I was, through the future merits of Jesus, and because of my exceptional role of future, future virgin father, cleansed from the stain of original sin. I was from that moment confirmed in grace and never had the slightest stain on my soul. This is my unique privilege among men. My pure heart also was from the first moment of existence inflamed with love for God. Immediately, as the moment when my soul was cleansed from original sin, grace was infused into it in such abundance that, excluding my holy spouse, I surpassed the holiness of the highest angel in the angelic choir. My heart suffered with the hearts of Jesus and Mary. Mine was a silent suffering, for it was my special vocation to hide and shield as long as God willed the virgin mother and son from the malice and hatred of men. The most painful of my sorrows was that I knew beforehand of their passion, yet would not be there to console them. Their future suffering was ever present to me and became my daily cross. I became in union with my holy spouse, co-redeemer of the human race. Through compassion for the sufferings of Jesus and Mary, I cooperated as no other in the salvation of the world. Now, that's such a powerful, beautiful message. And I said, it's only confirming what the best Josephite theologians have said in the last thousand, but especially last uh, 800 years, that Joseph was not immaculately conceived. That's a unique privilege of Our Lady. But a moment after his conception, he was purified from original sin. Secondly, he did not commit venial sin because he was to be the guardian, the redeemer, and receive those special graces uh, as the spiritual father of St. Augustine says, the moral father of Jesus Christ. Not the biological father, but still the moral father. And also that St. Joseph, his holiness was higher than the seraphim. Well, that's also things that theologians like Gerson said back in the 15th century. Now, the final element that St. Joseph reveals is <clears throat> his co-redeeming. And I have to go back to the commission uh, statement uh, that was released by Bishop Rhodes uh, because there's, there's simply, unfortunately, an error in the theological conclusions of the statement. And the theological error is where it says it is a doctrinal error to say that St. Joseph is a co-redeemer and that it's nowhere in the tradition. Well, first of all, we're all co-redeemers. In Christ, How could we say that we are co-redeemers uh, insofar as we make up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church? That's 1 Corinthians, uh, Corinthians uh, 1.24. Uh, sorry, Colossians 1.24. Um, the other, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.9 is co-workers with God. Uh, but St. John Paul II calls us to be co-redeemers in Christ. Pope Benedict said that we are called to be redeemers in the Redeemer. So, Obviously, we don't participate in redemption like Jesus Christ, our only divine Savior. But everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. This message talks about St. Joseph, that after Our Lady, St. Joseph contributed the most to the redemption. Well, that's the conclusion of, again, clearly 500 years of Josephite theology. In fact, there's a famous book called De Joseph in Latin by Cardinal Lepicier. It's a masterful work done in 1908. Its introduction is by Pope St. Pius X. And in this book, uh, it states that St. Joseph can be rightly called a co-redeemer. And so it has to be just, and you know, the human things happen, but this is simply a theological error to say that it's an error to hold that St. Joseph is a co-redeemer. And so for this and other reasons, uh, I believe that Our Lady of America is worth fighting for. 
When I say fight, please understand, my friends, I mean in obedience and according to proper ecclesiastical channels. Canon Law 212 says it is not only the right, but it is the responsibility of the faithful to bring to the attention to their pastors things they believe important for the church. Well, I personally believe this is important for the church. And so uh, I have uh, brought this to the attention of uh, the bishops uh, to have a re-examination of this. I encourage you to do the same thing if you have the same conviction. If those messages rang with the truth of the messages you know are from Our Lady, then take a moment and, and send an email to Bishop Rhodes in the Diocese of South Bend. Please, for the last time, please make it respectful. Please say, I believe, if you feel so called, I believe this merits further theological investigation. Uh, there's nothing disobedient and disrespectful about that. But I think Our Lady of America is worth fighting for because I think purity is worth fighting for. I think the purity of our country is worth fighting for. I think the purity of the world is worth fighting for. And I don't think our youth should be, ta should, should, should be robbed of this, what I believe to be a heavenly call to lead the charge. I, you know, I, I'm privileged to uh, teach at uh, both Ave Maria University and Franciscan University. The youth are phenomenal. They're, they're, a, they're an authentic inspiration. Yeah, they're Gen Zers. They've got those aspects too, but, uh, and they'll understand my kidding them on that, but they're beautiful. They're beautiful souls. They can do this. They could lead the world in a new movement for purity. But uh, my suggestion, my uh, invitation to you is pray for a new evaluation of Our Lady of America. If you feel so called, send a respectful letter or an email to Bishop Rhodes, just the Diocese of South Bend, saying, would you please consider a new investigation? Uh, there seems to be some inconsistencies in the first statement. Uh, would you please consider that? And then we do what we can to get uh, what, in my opinion, is a true message of Our Lady, critical for our times, uh, back into the action of spiritual play because it is a spiritual battle. Our mother, the Immaculate One, will crush the head of Satan, but how many people will be lost in the process? That's why it's worth fighting for. So let's end by praying the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. Some might say, well, aren't you kind of mixing messages? And the answer is one mother, my friends, one mother who's so generous to us that she comes to us on all different continents in different cultures to bring us the same message. Return to Jesus with your heart and acknowledge her role as the spiritual mother of all peoples. So let's pray because part of this prayer asks for our protection against degeneration. That's more degeneration. That includes human trafficking. Go see Sound of Freedom. That includes uh, natural disasters and war, uh, which you're facing in so many ways. So let's pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You want copies of that prayer, uh, of this uh, completely approved image and completely approved prayer, uh, you can contact us at mary at motherofallpeoples.com. We'll send it out free of charge. Thanks for being with us. God bless you all. And God bless America.